Welcome, everybody, to another edition of Talking with Heroes talk show program. I am Bob Calvert, your host, Ron Link, retired Army Ranger, 20 years of service to our country behind the camera. I am talkingwithheroes.com, our online news site. Thank you for your service. Dot US stories added pretty much every day from our troops in Iraq and Afghanistan around the world, also military and veteran support groups. And uh, we're here still at Camp Victory in Baghdad. We're with the Idaho Army National Guard, with also uh, Guards men and women from Oregon and Montana. And we're here with the 116th Cavalry Brigade under the command of the U.S. Division Center. And uh, we were talking earlier with Staff Sergeant April Davis, and she talked about uh, mayor cells. Well, we're here at one of the mayor cells. Those of you watching, you can see behind here. And we have a gentleman here who, by the way, uh, is a comedian. I don't know if we're going to hear any jokes on this interview, but he, I tell you, he is a comedian. Um, so I want to introduce you uh, to specialist Cody Force. Welcome to Talking with Heroes. Thank you. <laughs> Tell the people a little bit about yourself, where you're from, and how long you served. Okay, let me just, you can just take the mic. Uh, let me think about this here. Specialist Force. About myself? Yes, about okay. yourself. Okay. I am uh, five foot eight. Um, like 130 pounds roughly uh, I can't describe my hair color it's brownish uh, is he married or is he I'm, I'm married oh, okay. I'm married uh, my wife is very pretty I have one one child her okay. name is Riley she's four four years old right. uh, she turned four in in June um, I'm thinking about buying uh, I'm trying to buy a Camaro lately from the 80s so if you want to buy me a gift. Just, just like that, buy you a Camaro? Yeah, why not? Okay. Okay. Um, let me see what else you need to know about me. I'm trying to start uh, my own religion, the Church of Pac. Of what? Of Pac. We, as we discussed uh, rap, rap music earlier, oh, okay. my, my church is, is uh, dedicated to Tupac. Not as a god, just as his teachings. Okay. The teachings of Pac. Um, I have no idea what you're I wouldn't that's worry about it. <laughs> not, not that big a deal. Uh, let's see what else happened. That's going swimmingly. They say that uh, if you want to make a million dollars, you should start your own religion. We're a, we're a, we're a non-profit organization, the Tur Church of Pac. I warned you all ahead and of time. We had a comedian. I didn't realize how quick this was going. He's even held the mic for me, right? And uh, We have a new talk show host here. Oh, I'm sorry. No, that's okay. okay. How long have you served? I've been in some form of the military for nine years. Okay. I started off in the Army. Well, I guess I'm technically in the Army still. Active but duty. National Right. I was, um, that was in 2002. On May 28th, 2002, I went to the, the MEP station there in Boise. And, no, that's false. I, I'm, I'm bearing false witness. On April 22nd, 2002, I went into the MEP station there, and the guy says, you know what he says to me? He says, he says, what do you want to do for the Army? And I says, I don't know, admin? And he was like, he was like, no, I don't have anything for that. How about, how about infantry? And I was like, sure, that works. They're like the same, right? And he's like, yeah, they're the same. So I ended up in the infantry. I went to Fort Benning, and uh, we were here in 2003, part of the invasion. And then two years later in 2005, and then I got out of the Army and joined the National Guard, and here we are again. So you had three deployments? Three deployments, yes. Okay. Yeah. Talk about maybe some of the differences in terms of progress you've seen from them to here. I know now you're doing something really very different. Yeah, but yeah. What are some of the differences you've seen? Well, if we, uh, if we look back, look back all those years ago on 2003, we, uh, my platoon was part of this, this, uh, this general region. For a little while there in that we were uh, clearing out the looters from this area there was a lot of looters thousands of them so you were i was remembering i'm sorry um <laughs> yeah was that, let me ask you a question now yeah. let people know was that deliberate the hesitation was it a dramatic pause a dramatic pause yeah Kind of. Um, I was just, I was reminiscing. Okay, since we're going without, down to comedy, not out. <laughs> you told me earlier that, that you're, you're not one to go up on stage, but you're actually right. writing for a comedian that goes on stage. Right. Well, it's, um, let's, we're, you're, you're switching subjects on me I too know, fast I here. I figured you're, since you're being a comedian. Let's go let's backwards. Let's go right. backwards. Um, 
long story short, we were stopping looters in this area. It looked nothing like this. There wasn't T-walls and stuff, but now there is. And it looks a lot more uh, built up, militarized, so to speak. Um, as far as as far as 2005 goes, well, actually, let me, let me, let's go back some more. Let's go back some more. Back in 2003, we'd run traffic control points a lot. I didn't really see a purpose for it, but I was like 18. And so I don't know. I, and I still, you know, I'm a specialist. I don't know the purpose of, of really anything I'm told to do. I just question just it. Do it. No, I question it. Question. And then, uh, then do it. no, 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 no. And then, uh, and then get, and then like avoid doing it for a while and then, and then get to it ultimately. So yeah, I guess I do eventually, but I don't know. I don't, what are we talking about here? I mean, are we talking about something fun? Cause I'm going to go do something fun. Believe that. So then, but then like in uh, the traffic control points, we were always interested because like when they get paid, they don't have like banks and stuff or they do, but most people don't use them. I don't know. And so like, like what was interesting was just to see like the, the ridiculous amounts of money in the, uh, in their trunks. We weren't, we're, yeah, we weren't like taking it. We were just like, like, wow, this guy's got like a billion dollars, wow. but not literally. Of course it was, I don't know how much their money's worth. A dollar. Most of the people in Iraq don't have that kind of money. Though. Well, right. But they, yeah. they had just like a lot of bills in there. Yeah. And then, um, and then the second time I was here in 2005, we were at uh, Fob Normandy. It's like 30 miles from here, or something like that. Maybe, maybe 40. I don't know where it is. So you were in, in the same general area. Yeah, generally speaking. Um, and and what was more interesting at, about the trunks was whether or not they were going to explode. So you're like you're like you go from from money to explosives. So it's like it's like is that you know what I'm saying? And now and now. I don't worry about those things at all. I, um, sometimes, sometimes we, um, you know what I'm saying? I don't want to be all sad about this whole thing. So, so let's move right along. Next question. What are you doing here at the Victory Mayor Cell? The Victory Mayor Cell. I, um, my official title is DPW in COIC, but I'm not an NCOIC. So, um, I refer to myself as the DPW SPCIC. What is DPW? Uh, don't know like me. What it's the Department of Public Works. Oh, so okay. like when things need fixed on, on Camp Victory, it goes by, by my desk. Okay. Or like the requests go by my desk. I also have the signs made. I do that. That's, that's becoming, um, it's kind of a hit and miss on that lately because you know, it's the drawdown and stuff and we're the not. signs are actually coming down. Well, some right. Well, that's the thing is that, is that we're at the mayor, so we're trying to remove most of the signs from Camp Victory, but then folks will come, come and, they, and they want other signs just put in their stead. So, and I've got to try to explain to these folks that are substantially higher ranking than me that, that we can't make signs for that because there was already a sign there that's been removed now. Like we're heading home, right? Yeah, and then they're like, well, listen here, specialist. And I'm like, I understand that, sir. But that doesn't mean that, like, all of a sudden, I'm just going to miraculously be able to put a sign there. I can't. We already had a sign there. It's gone now. What do you want me to do? And that's I, it's it's a rhetorical question, but sure. they actually answer it sometimes. And, and you know, it's it's a fun job. It's um, I never thought that I'd be in Iraq doing customer service before, <laughs> but that's uh, it's something else. It really is. I've learned. You know, I've I've um. As we discussed about me being at the National Guard, I do a customer service job, uh, civilian-wise. At the National Guard or something? No, no, no. no. Well, I do tech support. Oh, that's right. You're right. For that. Apple Computer. Write that down. Is that a commercial? What? Is that oh. a commercial for Apple? Uh, no. Should I get paid for this or what? I guess we could try. Like, you could be okay. like, I'm a PC, and I'll be like, I'm a Mac. Okay. Okay. So you work when you're not in a National Guard. You yeah. Work tech support for Apple. Right, right. Okay. And uh, that requires some customer service. You know, to a to a to a pretty pretty big extent. So I've I had that going into this thing, and still, um, I think military customer types are a lot more um, needy, so to speak. If that makes sense. I don't know. I don't know either. <laughs> what about care packages? Ah, uh, yes, care, care packages. packages. Let me tell you a little story about care packages. Here we go. So actually, it's, it's kind of a funny story how it went down because I told um, my first care package I received here was in February, like around my birthday. I bought myself a nice gift, 
I don't remember what it was. It wasn't really that important. I needed like soaps and things. So I, I bought, that was my first care package came from, yeah, it came from Amazon. Okay. So Amazon sent me a nice gift. I just, yeah, I had to pay for it. Pay for it. Right. So you can, you can look at that as a gift if you want to. It's a gift from you. Right. And right. Your mom, you mentioned your mom. Yeah. Well, ultimately, uh, after I told, I told her that I was like, well, I told my stepdad, which actually I said that, that the only care package I received was from was from myself. He had assumed that I was talking about all letters that I received. So he's, he actually was imagining me writing myself letters and sending them to myself, which um, on, a, on a completely separate note, I love um, this this uh, this country music singer. We won't get into names, but she doesn't write people back. That's the end of that story.